Condi Mirage is another one of my open world builds that offer high sustain and high damage, and in this video we will look at the build in details. Mirage in general as a class requires a lot of mobility, so please keep that in mind because this build may not be for everyone, and make sure to take a look at the footage to decide for yourself if this build and the playstyle are going to work for you or not. This guide is for the first version of the build. I still have a couple more versions. One of them will offer even higher sustain and another version that will use sheep budget gear. For the weapons, we are using Axe, Torch and a Staff. For our utility skills, we are using Mantra of Recovery for the heal, Signet of Domination with Signet of Midnight and Mantra of Pain and your elite is Jaunt. For our traits, we are using Illusions, Inspiration, and Mirage. Riddle of Sand will make our first ambush skills when we enter combat applies two stacks of confusion. Ambush skills are your auto attacks after you dodge and gain the Mirage Clock effect. You will even notice that the skill now have different look and it will even have a different animation. As you can see, we are now out of combat, and if you look at the ambush skill, which is the very bottom one, imaginary axis, you will see the tooltip itself does not say anything about confusion. But if I dodge, and then use my ambush skills, because this is going to be the first attack when I enter combat, or the first ambush skill, it's going to apply two stacks of confusion. If I use another ambush skill now, it's not going to apply confusion. This effect will apply again anytime you use your shatter skills. So if I use any of my shatter skills, you will notice that I get the effect Riddle of Sand. And then if I dodge and then use my ambush skill, you will notice that indeed it applied two stacks of confusion again. Shatter skills will also give us vigor which means we can dodge more and use our ambush skills more, which is our big source of damage. On top of that, Vigor is going to increase our condition damage by 150, and so our shatter skills are going to be very important to our build and we will try to use them often. Infinite Horizon will apply the Mirage Clock effect, which is the blue effect you get after you dodge, this will also be applied to any illusions you currently have. Which means that if you have any illusions out and you use your ambush skills, you and your illusions will use the ambush skills, not just you. I summoned an illusion now, and when I dodge and use my ambush skill, you will notice that the illusion also used it. Inspiration trait line is where we get our sustain. It will give us a lot of passive heals and cleanses. Mender's Purity will make your healing skills remove one condition. Restorative Mantras will heal you and allies anytime you use any of your mantras. And in the build, we are using at least two mantras. Each of them have two charges. Restorative Illusion is going to heal us and remove a condition anytime we use a shatter skill. And the more illusions we have when we shatter, the more heals we get. Illusionary Inspiration is going to heal us and allies anytime we summon an illusion. Illusion Straight Line is where we get some extra DPS. Cry of Pain will cause our F2 skill to apply more stacks of confusion for longer duration. Shatter Storm will make our F1 have two charges instead of one. Compounding Power is going to increase our damage and condition damage every time we summon an illusion. The effect will last for 8 seconds and it can stack up to a maximum of 5 stacks. And our Master Trait will make our Shatter skills apply one stack of torment on top of of whatever other effects they are supposed to do. Phantasmal Force will increase your Phantasm's damage by 1% for every stack of might you have. And it will also give you 3 stacks of might anytime your Phantasms are converted into clones. So if I summon my Phantasmal Mage, you will notice after it's done with its attack and then converted into a clone, I get 3 stacks of might. And when I use Phantasmal Warlock, it's going to summon 2 Phantasms when they are done with their attacks, they are going to be converted into clones, and I get 6 stacks of might, 3 from each of the 2 phantasms that were summoned. Mantra of Recovery is a very good option for heals, because it's a mantra, which means it will benefit from restorative mantras, and it will also heal you more if you are below 50%. So this mantra is going to heal you twice, once from the mantra itself, and then another from restorative mantras trait. The same will go for any other mantra you are going to use here. Whatever effect they are going to give you, is also going to give you healing on top of it because of the trait. 
And so I often find myself using the mantra defensively for the heal even if I didn't need the effect. For example, if I'm using mantra of resolve even though it cleanses, but even if I don't have conditions and I felt like I need some extra heals, I can use the mantra of resolve just to give me that extra heal. Signet of Midnight and Signet of Domination are going to be passive most of the time, which will increase your condition damage and your expertise. If you wanted to replace one of them with any other skill for any other reason, I would change Signet of Midnight and I will leave Signet of Domination. Keep in mind that Signet of Domination will also stun for 3 seconds, which is very good to break bar. Jaunt, which is your elite skill is going to allow you to teleport which is very useful for various reasons and on top of that it will apply three stacks of confusion whenever it lands on an enemy and it will remove one condition as well so you can simply keep using it to teleport away from hard fight or something like this or to reposition yourself if you are in trouble for our utility skills we have a couple of options we can use for different situations mantra of concentration can be very useful anytime you want stab or stun breaks and keep in mind that the stability will also be applied to allies around you mantra of resolve is very good anytime you need extra cleanses and mantra of distraction is very good anytime you need some extra cc's to break bar or something decoy is also a good option defensively you can use it to stealth and maybe disengage from a dangerous situation and it's also a stun break if needed and on top of that it is going to summon a clone to keep your enemies busy while you run away or something mirror images is also also another stun break and this will summon two clones and it will break the enemy targeting what this means is most likely if they are hitting you they are going to stop hitting you and focus on your illusions at least for a brief amount of time keep in mind that both of them because they apply clones they will also benefit you in other ways especially from the inspiration trait line because they are going to summon clones they mean that restorative illusions will heal us for more when we use our shatter skills and we will also benefit from the clones with illusionary inspiration which heal us anytime we summon illusions especially mirror images which will trigger illusionary inspiration twice because it will summon two clones based on our selection of traits and skills we are using trip blazer armor with tormenting runes because we are going to do a lot of torment, be it from the axe skills or from the staff skills and also from your shatters. So this is going to be a constant source of passive heals. The runes are a little expensive but they are really worth it in my opinion. For the weapons we are using trip laser axe torch and staff while using sigil of bursting and sigil of malice in the axe torch. You can use bursting and malice on the staff as well or you can put sigil of corruption as a second option on the staff which is the weapon you are going to use less this way, if you found yourself staying in a map for long duration, you can use your staff to build up stacks which will increase your condition damage overall. But as I said, you can use Malice if you prefer. Now keep in mind, because we are using Torment runes, we are capped at 100% duration for Torment, which is the condition you will apply the most. So Malice will only be useful for the burning and for the confusion and bleeding and all the other conditions you will apply. Another very good option to use can be Sigil of Torment which will apply two stacks of torment in an AOE range around your target for every critical hit you are going to do and the cooldown on it is 5 seconds the critical chance we have with this build is not very high but it's still decent enough to trigger the effect from sigil of torment a couple of times in the fight and keep in mind that this is not only good for the damage but it's also good because it will work very well with runes of torment which heals us every time we apply torment the only reason why i wouldn't say that sigil of torment is the main sigil for this build is because of the price as you can see it is extremely expensive but if you can afford it i would recommend it and this was the main build i was using we are using two celestial rings and two celestial accessories for a lot of benefits especially for the extra healing power and toughness and vitality we get which will significantly increase our sustain with this build for the amulet and the backpack you can use viper or trailblazer if you want for the food we are using koi cake and for the utility, we are using the Corsair Tuning Crystals. Now that we understand how the build works, let's see how to use it. Axe Torch will be your main weapon. You will only use Staff if you want to range and you feel like you can't melee your enemy. On your Axe Torch, you want to just basically spam all your skills. But keep in mind that skills 3 and 2 can sometimes be a problem. 
If I use my skill number 3, you will notice that it will teleport me to a random location, which sometimes can be annoying especially if you are not used to that amount of mobility. Skill number 2 can also be a problem, as you see it made you switch locations which again can be very annoying in the fight. Which is why I mentioned at the beginning is that Mirage in general is a build that involves a lot of mobility which sometimes can be a problem for people using it. You also want to use your ambush skills as often as you can and so you want to dodge to benefit from the ambush auto attack skills which will significantly allow you to do more damage and keep in mind that when you dodge and use your ambush skills not only are you going to do much more damage because of the stacks of torment but you will also benefit from this massively with some extra sustain because of the rune of torment if you found the fight easy then you want to use your shatter skills as often as you can especially the moment you summon any illusions because this is going to increase your damage remember from the extra stack of torment we will apply from the traits this trait here and it will also give you vigor because of nomad's endurance which means you will be able to use your ambush skills more often but also it will give you extra condition damage so as you can see using your shutters can be very beneficial however if you found the fight is a little hard then you can start using your shutter skills defensively for the heal and for the cleanses you will get from the inspiration trait line same goes for your mantras if the fight is easy you won't use mantra of pain for the extra damage and vulnerability it will apply but if the fight is hard, then whatever mantra you are using here, you may want to save the charges as extra heals if your shatter skills are on cooldown or if you needed more heals. And don't forget that mantra of recovery will heal you twice, once from the skill itself and another time from restorative mantras. And if you felt like this setup was not enough, don't hesitate to change signet of midnight and put another mantra or one of decoy or mirror images for the extra sustain and benefits it will give you. As we said, you will use staff when you feel like you can't melee the enemies and you just want to range, and in that case you are simply going to spam your skills. Especially skill number 2, phase retreat, you may want to save it a little if you want to reposition yourself in the fight to avoid attacks or to give yourself a little bit more range and such. But everything else will apply, the dodges, the shatter skills, all of that stuff. Keep in mind also that when you dodge and use your ambush skill on your staff, you get a lot of might and you get alacrity. When you want to break a bar on the enemies, you will see certain skills start to flash. The first one is diversion. This will daze for one second, and if I use it now on the break bar, you will notice it ate a little bit from it. I switched my utility skills to be able to summon some clones and as you can see we have now three clones and if I use diversion while having three clones it did much more damage to the break bar. So diversion will break bar more with every clone you have. And so what I would recommend doing if you have an enemy that you want to break bar, don't use your shatter skills before you use diversion. Summon three clones if possible and then use diversion and then you are free to use the rest of your shatter skills. Phantasmal Mage is also going to daze the enemies when the clone is doing its attack and so you will notice it ate a little bit from the break bar as well. On top of that, you have Signet of Domination, which is going to stun for 3 seconds, and it will help a lot with Breaking Bar. Chaos Storm is another skill you have on your staff that will help a lot with Breaking Bar. It will daze initially, and it will apply Weakness and Chill, which will also help break bar. Distortion is a very strong source of sustain. It is going to basically make you invulnerable, against all conditions and damage for one second. It may not sound like a lot, but if you timed it well, you may be able to escape a lot of big hits from the enemies you will be fighting, especially the champions and bounties. The duration for distortion will increase the more clones you have. So if I use distortion now when I don't have any clones, you will notice it's applied only for one second. But if I have illusions and then use distortion, you will notice it lasts now for four seconds. One second from the original skill and then three additional seconds from each of the clones shattered. So in an easy fight you can use all your shatter skills without necessarily having to worry about anything to benefit from the vigor and the torment. But if the enemies have a break bar you should save your diversion until the bar is ready to be broken and it becomes blue like this and you will even notice the skill starts flashing. Or if the fight is hard and you need a little bit extra sustain try to save distortion and use it and time it well to escape some big attacks. 
As I mentioned at the beginning, there are still two more versions of this build to come. One of them is going to offer even higher sustain than this build, and the other one will be using cheaper budget gear. If you have any questions about the build, let me know in the comments below, and I would also love to hear your thoughts and feedback about the build. And if you ended up using it, I would very much like to know how did it go with you. There are a lot more people playing Guild Wars 2 now for various reasons, which of course is very good for the game and for everyone. However, unfortunately, it gives me very little chances to solo anything at all and so most of the footage you are going to notice there will be some people around me that will come later in the fight. Thank you very much for watching and I will now leave you with the footage.
Fear not this night 